So one of the family members, a great niece of Ferdinand, years she had left, uh, also in 1938, she went to California. Her name was Maria Altman. She decided after 1989, after the fall of the Soviet Union and all kinds of other things had happened, she decided that it was important to her family, to her own sense of Jewish identity, to, uh, to reestablish ownership of these paintings. She didn't want to hang the paintings in her house in California. She didn't even particularly want the money for the paintings. What she wanted was recognition from the Austrian government that these paintings had been wrongfully taken from her family by the Nazis and then by the National Gallery of Austria. And the National Gallery of Austria said, not been doing, there were some informal discussions first. They said, forget about it, we don't even know who you are, uh, not interested. And so she said, okay, well, I'm gonna sue. Uh, so she found, she was living in Los Angeles, and she found a medium-sized law firm in Los Angeles called Boris Schoenberg to take the case for her. And one of the attorneys, uh, Schoenberg, Randy Schoenberg, was himself the son of Holocaust survivors. So he was a little bit sympathetic to her situation. Uh, the son of, I think, Austrian Holocaust survivors. So, he took the case for, for his firm, and really they didn't think they had a snowball's chance in Langley Blank of getting anywhere with this, but they, they did, and they sued in federal court, and Schoenberg had a very ingenious idea about how to approach this. He dragged up uh, a law that had really not been used very much, and it was the Foreign Sovereignty Immunities Act of 1976. And the Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act says, or said, that um, a citizen of the United States may sue a foreign government in a U.S. court if the right uh, if a right to property that is involved in this suit uh, is part of a violation of international law. Don't ask me. <laughs> <laughs> well, normally you think, well, how could an American citizen sue the Austrian government or the French government or the Italian government? The short answer is, that you can sue if it's about property that was involved in uh, a larger context involving uh, a violation of international human law. Well, uh, sorry, international law. Well, I suppose international human rights, but that's not that's what I use. So uh, you can take any other examples. Um, that. That was, the, that's the basic statement. All right, so they filed under that law. That was Schoenberg's idea. And the, the federal court in, in California uh, that heard it um, sided with Maria Alder. So then they felt, oh, maybe we have a point here. Well, the National Gallery of Austria fought this. Actually, the, U, uh, the federal government of the United States also fought it. They filed an amicus brief. They said, we don't agree that this Foreign Sovereignty Immunities Act is a legitimate act under which to sue because all of these two events took place in the 1940s and this Foreign Sovereign Immunity Act thing was passed only in 1976. So it's a common thing that you can't punish somebody under a law that was set up later for something that was done earlier. There's a name for that legal principle which I Ex post facto. I'm sorry? Ex post facto. Uh, ex post facto, but uh, there's, there's also a, another legal term. In any case, um, can't be done. So then the question, uh, the case was referred to the U.S. Supreme Court on whether the Foreign uh, Sovereign Immunities Act could or could not be applied retroactively. And Schoenberg and Boris from this 
hitherto rather obscure firm in Los Angeles argued the case, the, the oral arguments before the U.S. Supreme Court in 2004. And in the meantime, Schoenberg, who was the younger partner, had made a deal with Maria Altman that if this went anywhere and the paintings were uncovered, that he would get, he took it on a contingency basis, if, um, if they would be successful, he would get X number of dollars. So they went before the Supreme Court and they won. In other words, the decision of the Supreme Court was, yes, Maria Altman, the U.S. citizen, does have a right to sue under this 1976 law. And I don't understand the full legal issues here, but the Austrian government was then forced to either um, argue in a U.S. court or to submit to binding arbitration. And so they decided they would agree to binding arbitration, and uh, judges involved in the binding arbitration included Austrian judges, it wasn't American judges only. And the panel uh, decided in the binding arbitration thing, case that Maria Altman was the rightful owner of the paintings. So she got uh, ownership of the paintings back, and the Schoenberg retired at the age of 40 with $135 million. <laughs> uh, the older partner, uh, Ronald Morris, getting mixed up with Roland Barris, the U.S. <laughs> senator from Chicago. Donald Barris, who is much older and still working, he did not retire on 135 million, but he was one of the participants in our symposium uh, in the spring. So the upshot was Maria Altman got the paintings back. Uh, she was willing to loan them back to the National Gallery of Austria. Uh, I think there was such a poisonous atmosphere at that point, the gallery didn't want them. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to the other four paintings, but uh, this painting was put up uh, for auction by Maria Altman, and it was purchased by Ronald Lauder for another $135 million, and uh, it's hanging in his ninth gallery. So uh, those are the issues. So there was, there was the case of this particular painting and the four others. Uh, two of them were landscapes by Klimt. There is this issue of the paintings, but the case is important because of these larger issues that I 